What is up everybody, Mr. Purtis here. Welcome to our DBQ outline explanation from the DBQ that you did about a week and a half ago, give or take. Um, this is the feedback that I would have given in class at the start of class, just to give you a sense of you know, what you did right, what you did wrong. So I'm just doing this through video instead. While I'm going through this, I would open up your Google Doc um, that you did on the outline so you can kind of compare what I'm saying with what you're saying. What I'm gonna say here is not 100% the only interpretation of these documents. It's just my suggestion um, and some feedback that I noticed. Uh, number one, before I do anything else, a lot of people are using HIP and doing purpose. You can't guess what you think the purpose is. It needs to say the purpose in the source. Now, it might not say the purpose of this source, but it might say that he's writing to try and convince the emperor of something. That would be a purpose. If it doesn't say that, you can't just guess that, oh, he wrote this because he was trying to do this. If it doesn't say it, you can't guess. So get purpose out of your mind. Some of you are doing purpose for everyone and you're, you're not using the sourcing, you're just guessing. So with that said, Question was evaluate the extent to which forced migration. So we're talking forced migration of African slaves to the Americas. So Africans coming to the Americas changed social structures 1450 to 1850. So here's what we got. This is document one. I'm not going to read through all this. I just want to let you know the meaning of this that I came up with was growing population of those who aren't full blooded Spanish could grow too large um, and overthrow the Spanish. The historical context I use for this, there's not a lot to work with here. Um, one, he's a Jesuit chronicler, which is he is um, a, from the Catholic Church. He's a religious leader, so you could have worked with his um, the perspective of the author. But I worked with the time period here just to give you a sense of what historical context looks like here. This is in 1585. Um, this is only like a couple years, a couple decades after the Incan were conquered by the Spanish. So the Spanish are still trying to set stuff up. So I said historical context, first century of the Spanish conquered the Inca. There's a fearful tone here of what might happen as the colony is in its early stages. So that's the impression that I got. Um, number two is a letter from King Afonso of Congo to King Joao of Portugal, 1526. Um, the what he's writing about here in my interpretation or my meaning is there's a loss of population amongst West Africans and he is really complaining to um, the king of Portugal who are the main slave traders in West Africa. A little outside evidence there. Um, the intended audience here, this is a king to king letter. So it's very respectful in tone to have his request heard. So I go intended audience here, king to king. He's talking sir. Um, he's trying to be very polite in his tone as opposed to you're taking all our people. I'm going to come and kill you. It's very like leader to leader. Um, next one is a Quaker and abolitionist. Quaker is a group of Christians who are very nonviolent and they are also known as pacifist, meaning that they don't believe in war or violence. Um, so the, the idea here in this document is there's war, the wars amongst West Africans as a result of the slave trade. So he's talking about this, this slave trade is really bringing decimation and issues in West Africa. For this, for the hip, I would do perspective of the author. He is an abolitionist, and if you don't remember what that word is, these are people who promoted the end of slavery. So he's going to write in a very negative tone about the horrors of slavery because he's an abolitionist. Doesn't mean he's lying or he's exaggerating. It's just his perspective, um, and therefore you're going to get his perspective on it. Um, document four, conversation between the Asante king and a British diplomat. This is based on the British diplomat's account of it. So there, that's a clue there of one thing you could do. Um, the meaning of this is the um, Asante king, who's from West Africa, wants to reopen the slave trade. He's talking about how he could capture thousands of people to make more money for the Asante. Um, and he wants to reopen this, this slave trade with the British. His perspective is, and I took the perspective of the Asante king here, even though it's based on his account, I took his perspective, which is he's the Asante king. He's trying to protect his people and maintain his wealth and power. So therefore he is talking about opening up this slave trade because it brought him so much profit. You could also take um, the British diplomat's perspective here, um, that it's his account. So um, we don't know what his motivations are, but I really like the perspective of the Asante king. Uh, if you want to do historical context here, this is towards the end of slavery. This is actually when the slave trade was outlawed in a lot of places, although slavery continued till the 1860s, um, at least in the United States. And um, that could be a historical context as well. Uh, lastly, there's this painting here. This is the Costas painting um, titled Mestizo Mulatto, Produced Mulatto. Um, the meaning of this is it's showing the race-based social class structure in Latin America. It's showing that if a Mestizo and a Mulatto um, have a child together, that child is a Mulatto. Um, I use purpose here um, because it is a Costas painting. That is the 
purpose of it. It is telling you what the painting's purpose is. And the Casas painting is designed to show different social classes in Latin America and their children. I don't like the sourcing here. I think this is the hardest one. I would have personally, if I was writing this, would have skipped this hip altogether because I think it's too tough. Um, in terms of my groups, I have the creation of the Casta system in Spanish Latin America. That's one in five. And the destruction amongst or by or for or within the culture of West Africa or West Africans, two, three, and four. Um, for outside information, I use Casta social structure. I would have talked about the Spanish Latin American social class structure with the peninsulares on top. And then it's breaking down by racial groups all the way down to African slaves um, and uh, Native Americans. And I would have, that's what would have my outside information. And for outside information for this one, I would have talked about that the Asante kingdom, which was, which is something that should be in your notes, uh, sold slaves to Europeans. They made wealth, um, or got wealthy off of it. And the, but in West Africa, there was a large loss of population who are majority male, destroyed the family structure, polygamy occurred. That's some solid outside evidence right there. In terms of contextualization, you can't go too far outside the bullseye. Like you don't want to talk about, some people were talking about the sub-Saharan trade route from 1200 to 1450, which if you connect it to slave trade, that works. But if you're just talking about like the Silk Road and trades existed in the previous time period, that's not enough. For me, these are the bullet points of stuff that I saw people write that I thought were good. Um, you could talk about the causes of age of exploration, new inventions coming from Asia and the Middle East, which allowed the Spanish and the Portuguese to expand, quicker looking Europeans looking for a quicker trade route to Asia as opposed to going all the way around and they bump into the Americas. Um, they conquer the Aztec and Inca because they have gunpowder. They're going to plant the Europeans plant cash crops and bring settlers there. They cotton, tobacco, sugar. They required labor. They enslaved. Um, they brought enslaved Africans, forced them coming to the Americas. Uh, you could also have talked about the Middle Passage, that journey by the West Africans coming to the Americas, um, and that the West Africans are trading these slaves for guns with the Europeans. Um, and just the idea of the Middle Passage being a horrible trip, the death of millions, they're going to come and being sold at auctions, and then boom, what's the impact of this? The key to this is the last line should connect to African slaves in the Americas. It should really come back and that last line should really lead into this this uh, topic here, which is evaluate the extent and should lead into your thesis here. And this is my thesis. It is um, from 1450 to 1850. There's the dates. The forced migration of African slaves to the Americas. That's straight from the question. Change social structures straight from the question. So all this so far is just straight from the question. And then here's my two groups. So my groups are right here, right? This is what I wrote in. Here's my two groups. The creation of the caste system in Latin America and the destruction amongst West African people. Boom, boom, my groups, my thesis. That's what I would have written. Um, it doesn't mean that what you wrote was wrong, but I just want to kind of walk through this as we get into some more of these and it's really hard to do a little face-to-face -face communication. So that's what I got. You got any questions, um, write it down. Let me know. I don't know, whatever. I'm out.